We're here today to recognize the loyal service of uh, Henry Weaver, a Confederate soldier, and we're going to do this with the dedication of the Southern Iron Cross, and this was uh, an Iron Cross patterned after the Southern Cross of Honor Medal that was bestowed to Confederate veterans for their valor and honorable service to the Confederacy. But now before we get started, I'd like to call on my dear friend and the SCB chaplain and the brigade chaplain, Reverend Tom Muffin, for our comments and invocations. Um, we're here today on top of this little hill in an obscure place, but Southerners have never shied away from being outnumbered. We feel that our ancestors did the thing that God led them to do. Uh, Wade Hampton of South Carolina, after the war, made the statement that if Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson were traitors, then you'd have to say that George Washington was. We did the same thing as Southerners that Jefferson and Jackson and Franklin did against England. All we wanted to do was be free. And there are rich, poor country folks, town people from all over the South that answered the call. And this small group is here to pay homage. Henry, is it? Henry Weaver. Henry Weaver. Uh, one of thousands of Confederate men, even boys, that rallied to the cause of their country. It's not the Civil War. It can be called the War of Northern Aggression. It can be called the War for Southern Independence or a number of other things, but don't ever call it a Civil War. The South never wanted to take over the government. We just wanted to be left alone and live our lives according to the way God called us to live. So today, it is my genuine pleasure as the brigade and camp chaplain to offer prayer for these proceedings. So would you join me and uncover if you can. Lord God, you have indeed been our dwelling place in all generations. And when we come together to honor one who served our land, we give you praise. We thank you that there is still a spark of interest to honor those that deserve honor. Lord, bless our proceedings this day. May the comments, may the inspiration taken away from here turn our eyes toward the author and the finisher of our faith our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, how about leading us in Dixon? You have the word. Oh, I wish I were in the land of Compton, old times there and not forgotten. Look away, look away, look away, Dixieland, in Dixieland where I
East Tennessee and the surrounding area became increasingly crucial in supplying vital key ingredients needed for manufacturing gunpowder and other raw materials, metals, and minerals to sustain the war effort. It made this area a prime military objective for both the Union and the Confederacy. On June 16, 1863, the first Confederate, uh, Confederate Congress passed an act authorizing the creation of a formal uh, Niter and Mining Bureau as an independent office within the Confederate War Department. This formalization and expansion uh, in turn required the need for defense and security for these operations. In 1864, under the Niter and Mining Board, a military unit was formed in Sutherland County, Tennessee. For detailed conscripts in mining and manufacturing of raw materials for the defense of these operations. At this time, Henry Weaver, along with others from the area, answered the call to duty in the Confederate States Army in the defense of his homeland and his family. He was assigned to detailed conscripts uh, at Mining Bureau District 7, Company A. He entered as a private and remained so until the end of the war in April 1865. If there is a picture of my great-great-grandfather, Henry Weaver, I am not aware of such. However, from the muster roll of this war rec his war records, we are given a brief description of his appearance as being 48 years old at the, at the time. Fair complexion, blue eyes, dark hair. In my mind, he projects a handsome image of a man willing to give the final full measure for the cause that he believed in. I know I would have been as proud of him then as I am today, and it gives me great honor to present this Confederate cross of honor that Henry Weaver so richly deserves. Great great uncle Henry Weaver departed this earth on April 3rd, 1893. Of course, I didn't know him, but I'm certainly looking forward to meeting him one great day in heaven. We have met here today to honor the memory of this husband, father, and soldier. His worldly deeds are complete, and the march of this soldier is over. Let us pay tribute today under the same blue skies of heaven that in life watched over him as he displayed his courage on the battlefields in defense of our homelands. May we, as we stand here by his grave, remember that it is our duty to honor all men like Henry Weaver, who stood shoulder to shoulder on the fields of battle and served so faithfully to preserve our sacred rights and our heritage. And as we remember Henry Weaver, let us cherish the example as a defender of those principles he believed in to be right. To me it is so sad that this man has had to wait more than a century for this deserved ceremony of honor, but I'm sure God has rewarded Henry Weaver for his deeds of valor. Now, on behalf of our family descendants and all the cherished friends, we dedicate this Confederate cross of honor as a crown over the remains of Henry Weaver in this hallowed resting place. Flags of the Confederacy have come under so much scrutiny because of the uninformed people and stereotype them with various corrupt, racist organizations. The informed person is well aware of these flags represent a prominent part of our southern heritage not hated. <coughs> Henry Weaver fought for his southern home, homeland and his deep convictions while following these flags for some of the most treacherous times during the War of Depression. It is difficult to imagine the horrible day-to-day -day circumstances that he and others like him had to endure. I would like to place this third national Confederate flag, which was the last flag Henry Weaver served on, as a salute to his heroic effort and to the proud heritage he has passed to us. ended until it is forgotten. That which is held in memory still endures and is real. We are grateful for our records of the past, 
which bring inspiration and courage in the present. We are appreciative of lessons taught by memorials to events and deeds of long ago. We pray that our lives may always be patterned to give such devotion and service as did our forefathers of this great Southland. We, the family and friends, now dedicate this wreath in grateful recognition of the noble service of Private Henry Weaver, a Confederate hero. <coughs> Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's children say it. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what, that's going to conclude our, our ceremony here for today. And I really cherish every one of you and thank you for coming.